Molarity is certainly the most important and often the most convenient unit of concentration that we use in chemistry, but there are other units of solution concentrations that you'll come across on a regular basis too, and in this video, we're going to discuss these in detail. The one thing that all concentration units have in common is that they are always ratios of units involving mass, volume, and or moles. And here I've indicated these in three different colors, mass units in red, volume units in purple, and mole units in green. And there are four alternative concentration units listed on this slide. Let's go through them one by one. The mass percentage concentration is the ratio of the mass of a solute to the total mass of the solution. And masses are what we call additive, so that we can find the total mass of the solution by adding up or summing all the masses of the individual components. So this sum over J includes all the solutes and the solvent masses. And so the mass percentage of a component I is the mass for that component divided by this sum total. The mass of solute divided by the mass of the solution. Now, Volume percentage is slightly different, but is similar in spirit. The volume percentage concentration is the ratio of the volume of a solute to the total solution volume. The difference here is that instead of summing over all the volumes, in the denominator I just have a V-tote factor. The reason that looks like that is that volumes, unlike masses, are not additive. Put another way, if we took 5 milliliters of methanol and dissolved it in 100 milliliters of water, the volume of the final solution would not be 105 milliliters. And this is fairly easy to test at home with things like vinegar and, and tap water. Solution volumes are not additive because upon mixing, volumes change. So here we just use the total volume of the solution in the denominator rather than a sum, but it's similar in spirit to mass percentage where we use a ratio of the volume of our component of interest, the volume of the solute, divided by the total solution volume. Mass volume percentage combines these two ideas and it's very similar in spirit to molarity with mass in the numerator and total volume or solution volume in the denominator. And so we represent it as N, M sub I, that's the mass of our solute component of interest, divided by V tote, which is the total volume of the solution. Mole fraction is a mole-based measure of concentration that uses the numbers of molecules of our solute of interest and the total number of molecules in the solution. So one way to think about it is as a fraction or a decimal or a percentage of the total molecules in a solution that are our solute molecules of interest. And it's defined as the ratio of the moles of our solute of interest, a mole unit, divided by the total moles of all solution components. And moles are additive again. And so we, to find the total moles, the total number of molecules of all of our solution components, we sum over all the components, all solutes and solvent, the numbers of moles of each of those. And that's what shows up in the denominator. That's the total moles of solution components. And in the numerator, we have the moles of just our component of interest, this solute I. So these four concentration units you'll see used from time to time in various contexts. Mole fraction is very convenient in physical chemistry where that fraction of a solution that's taken up by solute molecules is actually computationally, mathematically convenient and um, also gives us insight into the, the physical situation. In everyday life, mass and volume percentage are very common. For example, volume percentage is used um, to express the uh, percent by alcohol in things like beer and wine. And mass percentage commonly shows up in things like bleach, where we're interested in the strength of a, of a cleaning agent or, or something like that. So you'll see these three units used in everyday life uh, on a very regular basis. It sometimes happens that we're interested in a concentration that is very, very tiny. For example, when we're talking about tap water, and the concentrations of undesirable toxic metals in tap water, the concentrations involved have to be extremely, extremely small. And this is where very, very tiny units of concentration come into play, specifically parts per million or PPM and parts per billion, PPB. These are scaled versions of the concentrations on the pre, uh, units on the previous slide. So let's talk about what we mean by PPM and PPB, starting with one part per million, just as an example. This is an extremely tiny unit. Let's draw a picture to talk about what we mean with one part per million. Well, in a solution that has a concentration of a solute that is one part per million, if we had 
a million grams of that solution, which is about a thousand liters of the solution, if you do the math and assume your solvent is water with a density of a um, thousand grams per liter. And we had one gram of solute in that 1,000 liters of solution, the concentration of that solute would be one part per million. In, in essence, that's one part per million by mass. We have one gram for every million grams of solution. That's one part per million. And likewise, one part per billion would be one gram of our solute in a billion grams of solution. So extremely tiny units of concentration. And here we're using a mass percentage or a mass ratio concentration unit to ex express it. A bit confusingly, um, any of the concentration units on the previous slide can be scaled to generate PPM or PPB units. Um, and the, the unit that's actually used will be dependent on the context. In everyday life, it's actually not always clear what that context is, which is highly annoying as, as somebody who's a, a chemist when you're seeing PPM and PPB and wondering, you know, are they referring to mass by mass, mass by volume, or, or volume by volume, it's not always clear. For our purposes, it will always be clear what the underlying concentration unit is. It's very commonly actually mass per volume, so that mass to volume percentage is very commonly used here. One interesting point that's worth making is that um, using that mass per volume and then scaling by 10 to the 6th, is equivalent to milligrams per liter. And so PPM units and milligrams per liter are in essence the same unit. Um, milligrams per liter makes explicit that we're talking about a mass to volume ratio though. And finally, just because I haven't mentioned this yet, to generate a PPM unit from a given concentration unit that's a ratio, we take that quantity in terms of the original concentration unit and we multiply by 10 to the sixth, basically, parts per million, right? Units per million. That's what this million to the negative one power indicates. Likewise, for PPB or parts per billion, we take that concentration unit and that's going to be a very, very tiny number in units like grams per gram, right? Um, if we're looking at a standard mass ratio and we multiply by 10 to the ninth parts per billion um, to get the, the concentration in, in PPB. Let's work a quick practice problem to solidify these ideas of parts per million and parts per billion. According to the EPA, the critical concentration of lead in tap water is 15 parts per billion. When it's higher than that, remedial actions have to be taken to clean up the water. What is this concentration in PPM is the first question. So, so let's start by answering this question and then we can get to the second question, which is about the mass of lead in a typical glass of water. First, let's draw a picture as we always do. So 15 parts per billion, what does this mean? Well, in terms of mass per volume, mass to volume percentage or mass to volume ratio, it implies we've got 15 grams of lead in a billion milliliters of solution. How do we know we're looking at mass to volume here? Well, the question asks about the mass of lead in a volume of solution, a volume of, of tap water, which here we're thinking of as a solution of the lead in the water. And so 15, PPB in terms of mass per volume is 15 grams for every billion milliliters. To determine what this concentration is in parts per million, conceptually what we want to do is take that billion liters down to a million liters and ask how much lead do we have in that million liters of solution, right? So imagine chopping off a ton of the volume really of the billion milliliters of solution and asking what is the mass of lead in a million liters of solution. And here I'm representing it as X. The concentration hasn't changed. We've just really scaled the volume of the solution. And so we can set up a ratio equation saying 15 grams of lead for every billion milliliters of solution must be equal to however many grams of lead for every million milliliters of solution and solve for X that way. That's going to involve scaling by three orders of magnitude, essentially. And we end up at 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 grams in a million milliliters or per million milliliters of tap water. And conceptually right now, we can say that this corresponds to a concentration in parts per million of 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2 parts 
per million. So very, very tiny concentration, even in terms of parts per million. Now that we know this, we can progress to the second question here, which is, imagine we had a glass of water that was 300 milliliters. What is the mass of lead in micrograms, this mu symbol indicates the micro prefix, is contained in this typical glass of, of tap water. So conceptually, we're doing something very similar to what we just did. We're going from the parts per million level, a million milliliters, down to 300 milliliters and asking what is the corresponding mass of lead that shows up in this 300 milliliter solution. So again, a ratio equation. And I'm actually starting here from parts per billion. The, the parts per billion definition, you could just as well do this using parts per million and our 1.5 times 10 to the negative two grams that we found earlier. But starting from the same place, we know we have 15 grams of lead in a billion milliliters of tap water. And that must correspond to however many grams of lead in 300 milliliters of tap water. Do the algebra, solve for y, we come out with y is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6 grams. Micro indicates 10 to the negative 6 multiplier, right? And so this corresponds to 4.5 micrograms, and that's really just a unit conversion thing. So very, very small mass of lead, which is to be expected when we're talking parts per billion concentrations of lead in, in tap water.